I need a carriage bolt that's about 5 inches long. The hardware store only has them 4 inches and 6 inches, so I'm going to have to cut this down. And of course now the nut won't go on. That used to really frustrate me. Now I got this Threadmate kit. It's made by a company called Nest Tools. They make universal thread repair tools. They work on metric, standard, coarse fine, you name it. This thing's been really handy for me. This little tool here will go up to a half inch in size. And it's pretty easy. All I gotta do is put that in my vise. I got this cloth in here so I don't damage any more thread. Just take this thing, slide it on. I'm gonna put it quite close to the end because I just want to fix the end a little bit. Tighten it up and the teeth just go right into the threads. Doesn't matter what size it is. And it's nice that it doesn't cut. What it's doing is reforming the thread. And just like so. This thing's been really handy for me. These guys also make a really clever tool that does the same kind of thing for an internal thread. Pretty slick. So now our 5 inch carriage bolt goes into the hole here with the slot. Next I'm going to put on about 8 flat washers. They're going to act like a spacer. Then comes that large knob that's got the threaded insert in it. And it seems to work best if you put it on, if it's got a flange like this, you want that to the outside. Now that's going to be the thing that tightens up this gap that's going to grip the pole. But before I tighten that up, I'm going to take the 4 inch carriage bolt and put it in the other hole. And that's going to keep this block from splitting across this way when this gets tightened up. That's why we had to have the grain running this way. Because we can put that bolt to keep it from splitting. If you have the grain running this way, then it breaks right across there and there's not much you can do about it. I'll put a washer and a hex nut on this bolt. Tighten that right up. And I'll put my quarter inch nylock on the end of this bolt to act as a retainer. And let's turn it on long enough so that the nylon is engaged in the thread. And when we tighten this knob up, it closes that gap and locks this in place. Next, I need to make two wooden stops to go onto the shaft. They're going to be something like this. Now you can make them round, or if you want to, you can make square ones. You just start off with a square piece of 1 by 2 and drill a 3 quarter inch hole. And that'll look something like that. I prefer to use the round ones. So I'm going to cut them out with the hole saw. I think my inch and a half hole saw is a little bit small. So I'm going to move up to this inch and 3 quarter hole saw. Now I also need to drill that 3 quarter inch hole in the middle. There's a couple of ways I can do that. One way is to start off with your 3 quarter inch bit and drill a very shallow hole. Now you can use that center point to drill a quarter inch hole for your hole saw. I like to drill my pilot holes with a regular quarter inch bit because I always find that the bit on the hole saw itself tends to wobble a little bit. Now I'll make the cut with the hole saw. And with that cut, now I can use that shallow hole I made with the three-quarter bit to line it up again. And this is a little tricky now because I have to hold this with my fingers. So hopefully it doesn't spin and give me a friction burn. So that's one way you can do it. That's the way you pretty much have to do it if, say, you were using a hand drill. The other method is to take the workpiece and firmly lock it down to the drill press table. 
the table needs to be set low enough that I can put this three quarter inch bit in and out without moving the table. Now with three quarter inch stock my drill press had just enough travel I was able to drill all the way through that with that three quarter inch bit. So now without moving anything I need to take that bit out and put my hole saw in. When I use this method I like to remove the pilot bit from the hole saw mandrel because it's just going to get in the way. Because that hole saw is so much shorter than this bit was I probably won't be able to get all the way through with the first pass but I should be able to get low enough to clearly mark my cut into the workpiece. And that's as far as I can get. So now I can loosen off the table and raise it up. And because I've already started the cut, it's a simple matter to get that lined up in the right place again. I'll just finish off the cut. So that's a couple of ways you can do this. I'd like to say thanks to the guy who pointed out this method to me. Seems to work pretty good. However, doing it this way might not work if the only three quarter inch bit you have is something like this spade bit. It'll probably be so long that you'll have to set the table too low for you to be able to start your hole saw. I'd like to be able to spin these around in my drill press to sand them like I did with the knobs. But of course this quarter inch bolt isn't going to fit in here. So I came up with this idea. I got a couple of these large beveled plumbing washers. Now the size on this is three quarters of an inch is the size in the package. They measure out actually to about seven eighths. So I just slip one on this way with the bevel pointing up. Then I can put this uh, stop on there and I'll slip on the second one with the bevel pointing down. Now I had to bore out the holes in these by the way to a quarter inch but that wasn't hard to do. So now I'll put my wing nut on there and because these washers are beveled they automatically center themselves. Now I'll be able to put this in the drill press and sand it. Now I need to drill a countersunk hole for a number 8 screw into the edge of the stop. Since this is about three quarter thick, I'm going to use that 3 8 measuring stick. Make a little mark and then I'll turn this over. Make another mark. And those two lines are either going to line up or in this case I've got two separate lines so I'll just pick a spot in between them and that's where I'll drill my hole. On the first tripod that I made, I had some problems with these things splitting when I put the screw in. So I'm going to enlarge that hole to at least one eighth. I need to drill a couple of three thirty second screw holes into my dowel. One screw is going to go into the side about three eighths of an inch up from the bottom. The other one is going to go on the other end dead center. Take the end of the dowel that has the hole that's drilled into the side and put that into the tripod. Once it's in place, take one of the half inch long screws and carefully thread it into that hole. When you're doing this, if it seems like it's going to start splitting the dowel, stop and drill that hole a little bit bigger. The purpose of this screw is to act like a little stop so the dowel can't be pulled all the way out of the tripod.